Hello, hello, hello. How do you do? I'm glad to be with you, with you, with you, with you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you are. It's another wonderful day on the Grace Impact Radio. Today we are live with the FBI coach, Charles Aze. It's another time on Financial Intelligence Moment with the FBI coach. How was your weekend? How are you doing? How has your day been? I believe you woke up on the right side of the bed today. I believe you are strong, you are as fit as a fiddle. It doesn't matter whatever situation you have found yourself in. One thing is certain, God loves you. and God will definitely see you through that channel, through that circumstances, through that situation. I believe it's going to be a wonderful time as we share, continue with our, um, uh, what's it called again, with our review, <laughs> I beg your pardon, with our review, we, are, we have been on this book, Think and Grow Rich uh, by Napoleon Hill, we have been reviewing the chapters by chapters, the nuggets which he shared in this book, different um success templates he has given out in this book and uh, we have been on this journey for the past seven weeks today we are reviewing chapter eight and chapter eight is all about the title is decision the mastery of procrastination and he says this is the seventh step to riches you want to get rich you need to read this chapter like i said before and i'll always say it again over and over again if you have read this book before, please let's read it again, chapter by chapter. Every week you read a chapter. Every week you read a chapter. The 13 nuggets will take us through, or the 13 principles will take us through 13 weeks. And if peradventure you have missed any of the uh, uh, previous nuggets I shared, previous um chapters I reviewed, please go to my YouTube channel, FBI Coach, one word, FBI Coach, one word. That's my YouTube channel. So go there and you'll see all the past editions. So you can get your mind blown up. You can learn quite a lot. There is nothing, there, there is nothing as sweet as sharing and learning together. Now, those joining me on Facebook and on uh, YouTube, I appreciate every one of you. I appreciate my returning subscribers on YouTube. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the link in this video. You know, see, even if you have not found any link, go to my YouTube channel, FBI Coach, subscribe, and remember to activate the notification button so that once contents are dropped, you'll be one of the first to know. We give it hot, we give it spicy, we give it raw, the way it will transform your life. What I do is basically, uh, I help my clients to increase their influence. Through my specialized trainings, I teach them how to make money from what they are passionate about. I teach them how to monetize their knowledge. I teach them how to monetize their skills. I teach them how to monetize their passion. And I believe you and I can do business together. So slide into my DM on my Instagram handle, FBI Coach One, figure one, FBI Coach One. Slide into my DM. Let's talk. Let's do business together. Let's see how we can be a blessing to one another. All right. Without further ado, let's get into what we have for today, the, the mastery of um procrastination. You see, the number one cause of not accomplishing your desires in life is what? Indecision and procrastination. Now, we've, we've all felt that pool of procrastination at one time or the other. And it's usually tied to excuses. Excuses. Excuses are tools of the incompetence. They are monuments of nothingness, and it's only used by fools. Excuses. Every time we make an excuse for what we ought to do, we are simply telling lies to ourselves. I, I, I struggled with this habit over the years. Several years back, I struggled, I struggled seriously with the habit of procrastination, with the habit of making excuses, until I realized that 
you can't have results and excuses at the same time. You can't make money and excuses at the same time. I had to break out of it. I had to consciously tell myself, and, and my good book, the Bible also tells me that, oh, ye man, you are inexcusable. In other words, I don't have any excuse not to be successful. I don't have any excuse not to be a child of God. I don't have any excuse not to be tops in my chosen field. I don't have any excuse. So I made up my mind. I told myself, you see this word called indecision. You see this word called procrastination. I'll deal with it. How did I deal with procrastination? I got a jotter. I got a jotter where I jot down everything I do. Everything I want to do, I jot it down. These are the things I want to do. So when I look at my jota, it, it, it helps me to align myself. It helps me to jumpstart myself again. It helps me to look at myself and say, hey, Charles, you are drifting away. Come back to track. Get back on track. You know, it, it, and some of these excuses are opinions of others. What you should be, what you should not be, uh, but mostly because the action doesn't come from the inner heart of our desires, it causes us to have that indecision or to start procrastinating. And sometimes it also springs up as a result of fear. What will people say? What if I fail? What if I don't succeed? You know, so the energy in, in doing the actions that uh, or the energy in, in doing what you want to do, you see yourself lacking those energy, you see yourself lacking in that area. Why? Because you are listening to negative side talks. You are listening to that negative part of your mind that is telling you you can't do it. You are listening to that negative part of your life that is telling you, oh, you are a failure. Are you getting value from what I'm sharing? By the way, uh, uh, those on Facebook and, and um, YouTube, please tell me where you're being from. I would love to read that from you. Tell me your location and um, what is it like in your environment. Then share this link, share the YouTube link, share the um, Grace Impact Radio Mixer app link to as many as you can. Share it with your friends, share it with your loved ones, share it even with your enemies because that will make them be at peace with you. Okay, so like a child uh, trying to um, eat food they hate, you know, you keep bringing up resistance. See, resistance is instead the generated energy action. Resistance. You are generating an action, but, but unfortunately, that action you are generating is on the negative, you know? Is on the negative. So you need to start dealing with negativity. There is something uh, 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 Napoleon Hill said. He said in, in the book that if you are influenced by opinions of others, you will have no desire of your own. If you are influenced by opinions of others, you will have no desire of your own. In other words, once you make, once you are influenced by other people's opinion, you have made yourself a garbage ground. You have made yourself a dumping ground where everybody will come and dump everything they have on you. And once you do that, you don't have a desire of your own. You will not have control over your life. That's why we often say that never make people's opinion to become the subtotal of your life. Okay? Then again, he said, Close friends and relatives, while not meaning to do so, often handicapped, often handicapped one through opinions and sometimes through ridicule, which is meant to be humorous. Now, what he's trying to say here is that Sometimes your close friends, your family members, they are trying to tell you what to do. And they're saying these things not because they want you to fail. They are saying it because they want, they love you, because they want you to succeed. But oftentimes, this people's opinion is not in sync with God's purpose for your life. This people's public opinion is not in line with 
the plans, the purpose, what God has deposited, what God has laid out to happen in your life. So are you? the question is, are you going to continue living on people's opinion? Are you going to continue living on K Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be? Are you going to continue living on, oh, whenever it happens, it happens? Are you going to continue living on what your mother says? That's what you do. What your father says, that's what you do. Don't you have the will of your own? God created you and I and gave us the power of will and gave us the power to decide what we want. So are you going to take action? Are you going to change the narratives? It starts from the decision you make. Making the decision to act on your desire is the ultimate self-motivation. When you make up your mind that, look, I want to act on my desire. You have that, that's the greatest self-motivation, motivation or motivating force you can ever encounter. Always focus on sharing it only with the mastermind. Whenever you have such motivational force, such um, influence over your life, over your desires, whenever you have that urge, that push, don't share it with everybody. Share it with only your mastermind. And we have established that there is also a chapter that is dedicated to mastermind. I think chapter 10. Yes, the power of mastermind. We'll still go into that much later. But mastermind has to do with your circle of influence. Um, not circle of influence. Your inner circle. Your think tank. The group which you have set aside where you learn together, you motivate one another, you share values together. When you, when you know you are experiencing uh, the, the issue of um, procrastination or, or lack of taking action when it comes to your desire, get an accountability partner. Get someone that will keep pushing you, get someone that will keep reminding you, get someone that will put you on the tabs to make you, rem to, to, to make you remember that, look, you don't have to sleep on this. You don't have to give up on this. You need to do it irrespective of what you're facing, irrespective of what you're going through, you need to do this. So only show the rest of the world through your actions, what you are doing, not through your thoughts. You show the world through your actions. But you show your mastermind through your thoughts. You speak to your mastermind about the things you want to do, how you want to do it. You share ideas. Then the world should see the results which you are producing. See, uh, um, because the, the, in, you, this is because uh, they, they, they will unconsciously be compelled to give you their two cents opinion. I'm talking about the world. If you start sharing your ideas, everything with them, they want to give you their two cents what? worth of opinion. And, and most times, this opinion is not in sync with what we are doing. It's not, it's not aligning with where, where we're going. So protect yourself. Protect your desire from ridicule. Protect yourself. Protect your desire. It's precious. It's precious. There's a way Napoleon Hill also says, he said that value of decisions depends upon the courage required to render them. The value of your decision depends upon what? The courage required to render them. So go through life without thinking twice about it. Or, or, or yeah, some people go through life without thinking about it twice. Other, others, uh, uh, some, some are, are languishing terribly because they have not maximized their time. And before they know what's happening, it's gone. Time is gone. They say, oh, the whole year is gone. Now, we are about to enter um, the last phase of this quarter. You know, we have January, February, March, April, May, June. So the last phase of this quarter ends in June. And the question is, what have you been doing? How have you been maximizing your time? How have you been maximizing your resources? What if at times, you, you ask yourself, what if? What, um, what if at, at times I, I don't do the things I, I want to do? What are the consequences? 
So you, you should critically ask yourself these questions, okay? Decide to take risk. That's why Napoleon Hill is teaching us how to, uh, he, he, he taught us how to uh, um, use organized skills in planning our life, in planning our future. You talked about it in previous chapters, you know, uh, um, learning and practicing organized planning gets rid of many of the what ifs. When you learn how to maximize or use the um, um, organized planning, it eliminates what if, what if I fail? What if I don't succeed? What if I do this, it doesn't work? Because you are implementing the principle he shared in um, chapter specialized knowledge. Yeah, he shared it in specialized knowledge, chapter five, you know? So when you practice these principles, you plan your day, you plan your future. It empowers your faith. It empowers your face. It makes decision taking a lot easier because of planning. I have said this before, and I'm saying it again, that planning is a demonstration of faith. Faith comes easier. Faith becomes empowered. It's empowering, yeah. It empowers you. It empowers your, it empowers your destiny. It empowers everything that concerns you, okay? So the question is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do differently? What are you going to do differently to get a different result? What are you going to do differently to make sure that you don't end like others? See, procrastination is dangerous. Procrastination is the, is the opposite of decision-making and it's an enemy of success, which every man must conquer. Men who have accumulated fortunes uh, uh, beyond the uh, 1 million mark, they, they have the habit of reaching decisions promptly and changing these decisions slowly into what they want. Now, if you were in their shoes, you will notice or you will know that you have grown over the, 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 the years, you have grown over a period of time when it comes to prompt decision-making. I had to study biography of successful people, successful entrepreneurs, successful CEOs. And one thing that stood out amongst them, you know, when I was reading this chapter, I had to do that research. And, and I discovered that one thing that stood out amongst them was decision-making. They are prompt to making decisions. Sometimes the decision might work against them, but at the end of the day, they still, they still end up working in their favor. Why? Because of their mindset. Remember, whatever you think you attract, whatever you focus on, you attract. They already have a plan. And the plan says, I want to make $1 million the second half of this year. Now they put the plan, they start working out everything. There will definitely be risk. Risk will arise. But based on the principles which Napoleon Hill have shared with us in this book, uh, uh, you'll be able to mitigate those risks. You ask yourself, you'll be able to analyze the risk first. You ask yourself, is this a high risk, a medium risk, or a low risk? If it's a high risk, what are the things I need to do urgently to make sure it doesn't jeopardize the overall goal? Planning, organized planning. It is better to be obstinate like Henry Ford than a procrastinator. It is better to be what? An obstinate like Henry Ford than a procrastinator. There is a quote, or not a quote, there is a statement which Napoleon Hill made here about um, Henry Ford. He said, there is but little doubt that Mr. Ford's habit of definiteness, Mr. Ford's habit of definiteness of decision assumes the proportion of obstinacy, but this quality is preferable to slowness in reaching decision and quickness in changing of them. See, P 
people feel, people who feel are easily influenced by opinions of others. And, and one of the things which Napoleon Hill is talking about when he was referring to uh, Harry Ford is because Harry Ford refused to be influenced by the opinions of others. He refused to be influenced by opinions of others. Courage, courage, courage is very important. There's a, spe there's a special power which uh, uh, it produces in you. Courage produces desire. Courage produces decision-making. Courage produces faith. Courage produces persistence. Courage produces consistency. Courage produces organized planning. The secret is not a miracle. The secret is not a miracle. My children and I, we watch, you know, every Sunday we sit down to watch movies. Okay, we are either going to the cinema to watch movie or we stay at home to watch movie. So yesterday happened to be one of those Sundays we sit down to watch movie and we don't just watch any movie. We select movies that will um, they will learn a, a few things from. Because after the movie, we'll share what's the moral of the movie? What did you learn from the movie? And so yesterday we happened to watch Encanto. Um, Encanto is a cartoon uh, that has to do with, uh, they, 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 they talked about magical things, you know, how they got gifts from their grandparents, great grandparents. Now, as a child of God, I, I made them to understand that, look, there is not, it's, it's not about magic. These people are trying to explain the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of God. Because every member of the family had diverse gifts. That they, call it, they call it miracle, diverse, diverse special gifts. But a particular child never had a gift. The child, knowing at the end of the day, the gift of the child was made known Okay, her gift was more of uniting the family. Now, one key thing I'm trying to bring out from this story is the fact one key thing that was said, which when I asked my little boy, what did you learn from this from the movie? He said, Miracle is not what you receive. You are a miracle yourself. So the secret to courage is not miracle. You are the miracle. You need to decide. You need to tell yourself what you want, how you want to get it, how you want to build out of what you have. It is only the nature of law that is in us that will help you harness these things, which is available to everyone who has faith and courage to use it. Everybody have faith but not everyone has the courage to use faith. Thomas Edison said he learned 10,000 ways of not producing an incandescent lamp. He converted his obstacles to opportunities. And I'm asking you today, what are you facing? What are you seeing around you? I have been through a lot of challenges and for every challenge, I ask myself, Lord, what are you speaking? What are you saying to me? What do you want me to learn from this? So by decisions, by, by making decisions, or rather, let me put it this way, by decisions made in the spirit, it is simply an act of faith. You are demonstrating faith. And only by such decision, men can solve their personal problems and win themselves for high levels, okay? So um, a few things we must also remember when it comes to this chapter eight is that we must be quiet. When it comes to decision-making, we must learn to be quiet and listen. We must learn to be what? Quiet and listen. Don't listen to people who give uneducated opinions. Remember, education does not necessarily mean someone who has gone through formal, four walls of classroom. 
you can learn from the streets. Education is simply someone who is specialized in his chosen field and is willing to share that opinion with others. So don't listen to people who don't give uneducated opinions. Stick to your plan and try to even uh, 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 stick to your plan and, uh, and try. Keep trying, keep trying to stick to your plans. Even if it looks so difficult, even if it looks so uh, unassuming, even if it looks so uh, 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 as though you will not achieve it, stick to your plan. The principles doesn't change, but the strategies can change, you know? The, the, the chapter is not exactly an explanation, but a guide, a guide to the behavior you must adopt. This chapter eight, is a guide to the behavior you must adopt in order to remain focused. Decision-making is very critical in life. Now that you know this, and I'm asking you, what are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna do with it? You have to learn about persistence. You have to learn about persistence. And that's what um, chapter nine talks about. But We'll get into that place next week when we get there. So you must learn to stick to your decisions. You must learn to deal with procrastination. Always remember that procrastination is the thief of time. Always remember that excuses are tools of the incompetence. They are monument of nothingness and it's only used by what? By fools. So you must learn to take quality decisions you must learn not to give up. You must learn to stand in the face of that challenge. Now, there is an exercise which I want you to carry out, okay? Your decisions are reflected by your priorities. Your decisions are reflected by your priorities. The decisions which you take is based on your priorities. And your priorities show up in two places. Your priorities show up in your calendar and in your checkbook, in your bank account. <laughs> your priorities show up in your calendar, the things you have put down to do. I, I'm running a course. Uh, um, recently, I enrolled for a training uh, and it's uh, I spent quite a lot of money for that training. So I have set aside every day, two hours every day. I'm not gonna do anything. Within these two hours, I must do my course. So your priorities is reflecting in your calendar, which will ultimately reflect in your bank account. Take a look at both your calendar and your bank account and determine where you are investing your time and money. Take a look at your calendar and ask yourself, am I investing enough time in my calendar? Because your calendar is your boss. You might have a boss in the office. Your calendar is your boss. That's your to-do list. Take a look at your bank account, the reflection of your bank balance. Does it reflect what you want? The digits you are seeing there, does it reflect what you want? If it doesn't reflect what you want, then you need to do something about it. You need to change your priorities. You need to change what you focus on. You need to change the decisions which you are making. Are you, uh, are you procrastinating more than you are, uh, than the actions which you are taking? Are you the type that will say, okay, I'll do it today, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week, and at the end of the day, they never did anything. Check your priorities. Check your decision. And this is where we're going to call it a day for today's review. Um, today's review is so, so apt. No long story. No long sermon after evening service, like one of my pastors will say. So take action decide to decide, decide to change, take up that job, take up that business, take up that study, take up that book and start reading. Forget about every worries, forget about every challenges. That challenges, you can overcome it. You can overcome it simply by speaking to your mind and telling yourself, reminding yourself, you are the best thing God has created. You are the best product on earth. You are the one that is responsible for the outcome. Take that decision today and make a change in your life. And as you make a change in your life, it will also affect the life of others around you. Have you been blessed? Have you gained something from today's broadcast? 
Have you gained something from today's uh, 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 sharing with you? Now, I want you to go the extra mile and share this link with other people. Go to my YouTube channel. If you are listening on the Grace Impact Radio, of course, you know there's you can't have a replay immediately, but you can go to my YouTube channel and forward the link. FBI Coach is the YouTube channel, one word, forward the link to as many as you can. Until I come your way again, have a wonderful day. Bye.